Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello and welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are sitting down with Amber Hamilton. Amber is a vice president and project manager at SQI Inc., a full-service roofing company. And Amber and I recently met at the International Roofing Expo, and we had some uh, really fun discussions and interesting conversations, and I invited her to come on the podcast so we could continue what we were talking about there. So today, what Amber and I wanted to discuss was the impact that women are having on construction today, and also how we can help expand the number of women that are involved in the field, and also what technology might be able to do to help make that happen more quickly. Uh, We're also interested in discussing and exploring how we can attract younger women into the industry that are coming out of high school or college and entering into not only the back office, but also into the trades. So hello, Amber, and welcome on the podcast today. Glad to have you. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the time. You bet. So I, I just wanted to start off by asking How important do you think that it is that we start getting involvement from women out on the job sites more regularly? Mike, I think it's really important. I think it's important that we be able to utilize the talents um, that I think that women can bring to the industry. Um, Generically speaking, I think that women in whole are a little bit more detail oriented. And in my trade, which is commercial roofing and sheet metal, the details is what really matters, like kind of everything in life. Um, And my passion would be to be able to have um, women out on the roof to be able to drop back and do the details. So utilizing the strengths of women doing the details. So your pipe penetrations and your drainage and things of that nature and being able to have the guys just kick out the, the rolls and the heavier things. Not that women can't do it, but being able to utilize people's talents and what they are best at. Yeah, I love that you're bringing that up. I think, I mean, you're talking about playing to strengths and talent isn't necessarily hauling a bundle of shingles up a, you know, a 10, 12 roof pitch, right? Right, exactly. Love that. So what are some ways that you have seen uh, companies starting to move this direction? Have you seen much of this? Is there, is there any of it going on or what's your experience? I have not seen a whole lot of it with women in the actual field working. There's more women working, I would say, in the office, both on general contracting and subcontracting side. Here at SQI Inc., um, I'm proud to say um, I am partial owner here, but I do employ several females here that do hold decision-making roles, um, and they're supported. I've taken a lot of passion into training them and giving them guidance and supporting them allowing them to get out there, but knowing that they have the support of me to back them up regardless of what happens and helping them train them, right? Um, Not just myself, but my field craft. I take pride in that my field craft know that women are allowed to step up on the roof and they're not judged in any way, shape or form. They are taught. um, They can ask questions. There's videos that I've posted all over LinkedIn of females uh, that I've, that I have employed and currently employed that have been up on a roof and, and, you know, my crews welcome it, actually. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's awesome. So, Amber, what do you believe is preventing more women from actually having these roles in a construction company? I think there's a few things. I've, I've thought about this long and hard. It's something that I think about almost on the daily. Um, we still, unfortunately, this is, you know, a male-dominant trade. So you still have yeah. the people that make the nasty crude comments. You still have the people that are derogatory towards um, females. Um, And then if you take it outside of that, you have lots of women are moms. So how do we get moms that want to work outside the home or have to work outside the home out into the field when they might get a phone call from the daycare saying, hey, your kid's sick, you need to come pick them up. What does that look like? Um, Also, I think there's a huge lack of training 
just across just across the board, male, female, whatever. Um, we have to train our people up, and that means our leaders. So whether it's a project manager in the office or a foreman out in the field or your superintendent that takes them aside and says, okay, let's learn this today. Let's watch me do this and let's, you know, train you up. It's not something instant. We all forget that we started, you know, at the bottom at some point in our career and had to be trained by somebody to invest. So I think training is a big thing so that when we do get females in the trades, that they feel like they're supported, that they're not just like, oh, I'm a female and I'm checking a box. We want them to be trained and we want them to be solid and, and feel comfortable in knowing what they're doing. Um, you know, I think the being the mom part is probably the biggest challenge. Um, not sure what that looks like, but I think programs need to be um, put together to accommodate that. Yeah, for sure. I I know no matter how hard I work, my wife with our kids at home, especially when they were young, was always working. I felt like twice as hard as I was, no matter what I was doing. I'm I'm sure you can relate to that. I can. Um, Like I was telling you earlier, um, I've read a few books. I do a lot of audio books. And um, there's a statistic out there that says that women naturally hold 7% more duties across the board than their spouse. Um, and that, that's a big number when you're talking about working outside the home and then coming home and doing your mom duties, if you will. Um, you know, my children are grown and I still go home and I have mom duties that I do. So it, it's a constant balancing act and trying to figure out the structure and what makes it work um, to have balance because there has to be balance between work and home. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great point. And I think uh, you mentioned training for for males and females. Better training is something that all construction companies can do. Outside of that, what are some other things that executives and leadership can do within construction companies to help support these women and nurture that environment where more women will be attracted to come on board and join the team? So, you know, Mike, um, I think what I've always thought of, I consider myself a pretty successful female in the trades. I've been in the trades for 15 years and been born and raised around commercial roofing. Um, Those of us that have decision making roles, I think it's important that we're approachable because sometimes we become unapproachable just because of the duties that we do have Um, and being able to make it so that they can feel like they're comfortable enough to come ask the question. I know a lot of times talking female to female, it's better to ask the question. I've had some other females in the trades come ask me questions because they feel more comfortable asking me, knowing that there's not going to be a judgment. Oh, oh, she's just a girl. She doesn't know the answer type situation. Um, But there's also, um, for our trade, we have National Women Roofing, which I'm part of. The piece that's really... Um, important to me is I feel like that you can collaborate between other females and that there's not judgment. Women naturally judge um, human nature. One looks at the other and judges them for whether it's their looks or their body type or whatever it may be. Um, the National Women in Roofing, you know, there, there's a collaboration that you can ask any question and it's okay. Someone will have the answer. We'll find someone that does have the answer for you. And, you know, you can be a competitor or you can be friendlies. It doesn't matter there's a safe landing place to ask the question. So being, being approachable and being able to, those of us that are, have, or sorry, those of us that have leadership roles, sharing the knowledge and information as to how we got there instead of just being in a decision-making role. Yeah. You're talking about paying it forward and helping foster that and, and mentoring others that, that may be able to come up and fill those roles in the future. Definitely. Definitely. I love that. So with your National Association for uh, Women in Roofing, I I don't know if that, is that the acronym, N-A-W-R? It's N-W-I-R, so National Women in Roofing. Okay, got it. Okay, perfect. Um, Yeah, I saw a lot of, I noticed actually when you first came up to our booth, I noticed your pin on your lapel. And so I knew immediately, oh, this is awesome. You know, I I was excited to speak with you because I I figured you'd have some interesting things to talk about and you, and you did. Definitely. Um, in For my company, um, we have a lot of uh, logoed fleet. Uh, we do own our own boom truck, and it proudly says uh, National Women in Roofing on it. Um, at first, my crane operator, who's an older gentleman, um, used to get 
I wouldn't say harassed, but a lot of the guys on the job sites would say, what do you mean you're supporting women in roofing? And, you know, I said, have them call me. I'll have a conversation. Um, And now my guys accept it. You know, my fleet proudly supports National Women in Roofing. My females that are out in the field, they wear, you know, the hard hat sticker that says National Women in Roofing. We're we're proud of it, you know. Um, There's nothing to be ashamed of, so. Yeah, I love that. So you're starting with your own culture. And I I would imagine you have opportunities to be a good example to other trades and other companies that are on the same projects as you. I definitely have tried over the over the years, definitely. Um, um, My own experience, I've I've stepped into job sites where other sub trades would know what my vehicle looked like. And so they were waiting out at the gate and making crude, snippy comments. Um, I'm a pretty friendly person. I believe in acknowledging people. Hi, how are you today? But that's not I'm not flirting with you. I'm asking you how you are um, and, and checkpointing things. Um, you know, I've had to checkmate my own crews before when they've entertained crude comments. I'm like, listen, this isn't tolerated, period, end of story. Um, like I've said, you've got to stop it when you, when you hear it or see it. And the change happens, in my opinion, when the males hear it or see it. It's stopping that other person from making those comments because it happens still on the daily at job sites. It's human nature, right? Yeah. You're saying men need to be good examples to other men and help them accountable for inappropriate comments. Yeah. Inappropriate comments or any inappropriate talk or anything that shouldn't be tolerated when we're at work, right? Or just in general, to be quite honest, but we have a place, right? Male, female, it doesn't matter. We all have our talents, like I had said earlier. Um, We need to utilize people's talents. This isn't, I'm, you know, I'm Superman. I'm going to do this all myself. Like, let's bring in people. We we all know that there's a labor shortage. Women are the answer. I've been saying this for years. And what I mean by that is bring them to the roof, bring them to do electrical, mechanical, mason, whatever it is. There's details in every sub trade that can be utilized by a female where you don't have to have super strong muscles to be lifting super heavy things. There's a place for us. They just have to be given the opportunity. Yeah. And I think one of the other areas, of course, with technology and, and software programs. And um, I think I, I shared with you at the international roofing expo, we had a guest on our podcast a while back that was a young female drone pilot and, was very valuable and continues to be valuable to her, a very large construction company in her role. I I think with technology, um, like I was speaking, technology and construction are pretty severely behind compared to a lot of other trades. So right now there's a whole lot of, I would say, um, chaos going on, I guess, with technology, because there's so many applications coming at subcontractors to try and figure out what best is going to fit your business to utilize, you know, all of people's talents. And there are people, you know, that are better at the technology piece. So what what we've done is we have figured out that, you know, we have some of our older field craft because the, the average age of construction, I think, is between mid to late 40s, early 50s, I believe. Um, when we do get some of these younger guys, hopefully gals sooner um, than later, um, being able to utilize the applications and log the time in the technology, because these guys that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s aren't so savvy with some of these technologies. And having these younger people that have were essentially born with the phone in their hand, right? Um, being able to utilize the technology piece. So Construction in whole has a long ways to go, in my opinion, with technology. We're getting there. And I think um, having the technology will help us grow, getting the younger generation in. If you're still on pen and paper, which we've gotten away from and we're working towards the technology and change, we'll bring in some of the younger generation because, like I said, they're used to the technology piece. They don't even understand the pen and paper part because everything at school is like on a laptop or their phones or whatever it is, right? Um So I think we can make headway with it. It's just a matter of how do we how do we get in to get these people, whether it's male or female, right? Because we need people um, into the trades. So um, hopefully technology will be one of the pieces because our um, our industries can't be, you know, outsourced out of the country. 
we need the people here with their hands to build the things. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a shift in where people are directing their um, their intentions, I guess, as, as a career. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I know one of the other areas that we talked about earlier related to technology, though, is with cloud solutions and cloud systems, if if a mom has to run home to someone who's sick or, or a dad, for that matter, doesn't matter. If a parent needs to go home to a sick child, they can work remotely. We've all learned that these last couple of years by, you know, whether it was uh, by force because of our environment and the situations going on around us culturally and in the world. But, uh, but, but certainly that would open up more opportunities, I believe, for more women, regardless of their situation, to, to join the construction industry. Definitely. Um, like I had said, I have, I have two women here that have young children and we've been able to utilize the technology with them being able to be home. So they're still being able to bring home a paycheck because they're able to work from home. Now we don't expect them to work their regular hours, but if they can work from home and do some things, they're still getting paid. And there's the benefit to that being able to take your technology or your laptop or whatever it is, your, your device that you're working from, um, to go home and get some things done when you're tending to a sick kid, you don't just get to sit in front of a computer, but um, yes, it's definitely a blessing. And um, we haven't really missed any, any beats because they've been able to work from home. So definitely. Yeah. We, and obviously it's, it's easy to see the gaps because there are so many and they are so large currently. Are there some areas that construction is doing well at employing women that, that you feel? On the supply side, I see more women um, coming into the trades, and um, I used to work on the supply side. I think that they are attracting like the college age um, students. I know that I there's some some of the um, supply houses have talked about um, athletes bringing in the female athletes because they have a drive and determination. I don't know if that's the perfect formula. Um, I don't know if there is a perfect formula on the general contracting side. You see it more. Um, like when we were talking about the IRE, when I was at the show and we were having conversation that um, when you talk about women in construction and you go to the subcontracting piece and then you dive down to the decision makers of the subcontractor females, we become a much smaller percentage. And then you add the whole um, diversity piece to it of, you know, women of color. And we had that conversation that you've had some women that are, you know, women of color business owners, which is awesome. Um, you know, how, how do we get more women into those positions and giving opportunities for them to grow, giving them the chance? You know, it's not something that you come in and you just automatically get the seat at the conference table or that you're some big decision makers. No, we start at the, you know, at whether it's a office admin and you're working your way up to estimating and project management, which is how I've done my career. So you're learning the parts and pieces so that as you grow and you're learning all the parts and pieces, you're successful because you know how all of the parts and pieces work when you get to the decision-making piece. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think one of the other things that we talked about before and, and a little bit here, uh, there are there are endless opportunities in companies where they are understaffed. And so it's really, I mean, I just keep shaking my head thinking, you know, pick what you like. I mean, pick an area, throw a dart at the wall and you'll hit somewhere that, uh, you know, a woman could come and help just about any company I've ever talked to in this current market. Definitely. I, I promote women all the time. I tell people, you know, I, our doors are open for anybody and everybody Obviously, I employ a lot of women, but if there's a male, I I don't care. If you can do the job, you're hireable, you know, or if you want to show that you are putting, want to put forth an effort to grow, that's the other piece. Um, effort has to be given on both sides, right? The opportunity can be given, but the effort has to be put in for the opportunity to want to grow. So as, as a, a part owner of a construction company, um, yourself, are there things that your company is doing or has thought about doing to, you know, have outreach to colleges or high schools or trade days or things, job fairs or things like that to this point? Or is that something well, you have yet to explore? Going to the IRE, there's a couple of classes that myself and um, my service manager, Summer, um, had 
gone to and having a couple of conversations. We met a gal um, from Graham Roofing, who's a project manager and superintendent. Um, and then the owner, Christy, spoke. Um, and she's also on the council at, or sorry, on the board for uh, NWIR. She was just voted, I think it was vice president um, of the of the whole entire council. So um, what they've done, they're, they have a business model much like us. They're a smaller company, gone from paper to kind of moving into technology. And they have outlets where they've gone to some of the colleges and, and schools and whatnot. But what they've learned is the younger you start, the better chance that we have for retainage. So instead of starting at the college level or high school level, we need to get at the junior high or elementary level. So what Summer and I were talking about, we do a lot of public works jobs and we're on several schools and we're on an elementary school right now. So as everybody knows with COVID, we can't travel. There's no field trips, all these things we thought about. Okay, cool. Maybe let's reach out to the general contractor and see if they're willing to kind of do a quote field trip, if you will, with some of these kids and just kind of walk the job site, not just for roofers, but for all the sub trades kind of, obviously we need to make it safe because we have kids, but talk about some of the things or have them kind of in one of the fields and we can operate different things, bring in people from different trades, you know, to um, promote the trades. And it's okay to work with your hands, you know, it's okay to get dirty. Um, the, the trades are a, a beautiful um, opportunity to grow and make money, you know. Yeah. And I, and, and really bring it back to why any of us that are entrepreneurs are in business is to, to make money, to provide for our family and provide for our employees and to grow and to fulfill our, you know, capabilities. Right. Definitely. This industry is fantastic for that, especially in this market. So there's a lot of money and opportunity to be made by men and women. And we, we just need more women to plug into that and Take that bull by the horns. <laughs> the, the trades, I think, still have that nasty stereotype from back in the day, if you will, where this is where, you know, the felons and the people who can't go to school have to land. And that's not the case any longer. It, unfortunately, it just still has that stereotype, which is where, you know, we're fighting an uphill battle trying to change that trajectory as long as well as bringing in diversity, whether it's um, color or gender or religion or whatever it is bringing in the diversity, right? Whereas before, back when it had this stereo or was the whole entire stereotype of this is, you know, the felons and the people that can't, can't get a real job. A real know. job, yeah. yeah. Um, just promoting it, I guess, you know, and, and letting people know, you know what, this is okay. And you can make really good money doing it if you put the time and the effort in. Yeah, I, I think one of the other things that I hear commonly, and it's actually, uh, I'm a big fan of Mike Rose, you know, Dirty Jobs and Deadliest Catch. And uh, you and I spoke, Mike Rowe had honored actually one of our guests, Letitia Henke, that was on a couple of our episodes. She's also a woman uh, roofing company owner, and she has put a program together to educate high school kids, boys and girls, uh, about the trades, which is fantastic but um, we need more of that. But Mike Rowe was talking on another podcast. I heard him, you know, speaking about the challenges of society now taking wood shop and metal shop and some of these things out of the school. So they're not even offering those as a track. Yes. And that's where we have even more of a challenge, right? So the trade schools used to be something that we could go to or the job fairs that used to be at the high schools. Um, those don't exist anymore. Even prior to COVID, I feel that those were kind of just going by the wayside. Like you must go to a four-year college or else you're not successful or all these things that we're teaching our kids in school that aren't true facts. And unfortunately, if they don't have parents at home that are telling them otherwise, they believe that. And then if they don't go to a four-year college or if they don't get X, Y, Z degree, then they're classified as a failure and you're not going to go anywhere, which is not the case at all. It takes all kinds to work. That's a working mom to a stay at home mom. That's a union shop to a non-union shop. That's male, female. It doesn't matter. It takes all kinds for this world to go round and for things to get done. And that's what we need to be promoting. I know that in my own home, it was, it was taught you do whatever you feel you want to do, follow your dreams. 
Um, and I support my children 100% and they're both very successful. Well, that's fantastic. I think, I mean, my takeaway is, as we're discussing this, I keep thinking that a lot of these responsibilities are going to continue to fall back on us as uh, you know, business owners in the construction industry. We're going to have to figure out how we can raise awareness and promote these trades into these these places where young children can learn about them and be interested in them. I mean, I, I had the Tonka trucks as a kid and played in the sandbox and everybody wanted to drive the tractor. And uh, I think it's natural, but we, we generally, if we want to continue to fill these positions and grow our businesses, we, we've got to find people to fill these roles. And right now the, that is becoming more and more difficult as I'm sure you can attest. It is because technology, going back to the technology piece, our kids, like I said, are born with a phone in their hand. They're video gaming. Their friends are friends across the world, right? On their little headsets while they're playing their games. That's what they classify as a friend. Whereas a friend, when I was growing up, you go outside and you have friends to play with, right? So we have to figure out that dynamic as how do we get them outside, right? Because a lot of kids are entertained with their phone or a TV or a tablet or all the things that you see when you're out and about, right? Whether it's an airport or a restaurant or whatever, the kid, you know, the parents are handing them some, some form of technology to keep them quiet, right? And so if we're starting with technology, how do we get them out into the workforce to use their hands, to use their physical body to do their job? That's, that's the real question, right? Because we've kind of gone away from, hey, go outside and play. You don't see kids playing outside as much, depending on where you're at. I know here in the Pacific Northwest, I mean, there are some neighborhoods, but it's not as common as when uh, you and I were growing up, right? Go outside and play. Don't come home until the streetlights are, you know, on that type of scenario. That doesn't happen anymore. Well, and I think raising awareness and having these conversations is the best way that we can at least get get those conversations started. I mean, that's where that's where it can reach into our communities. And we need to go to city councils. We need to go to school board meetings. We need to go places where we can raise awareness to this fact, because this really isn't a construction industry problem. This is a society problem, right? 100%. 100%. (laughs) Everyone lives somewhere uh, that somebody built, whether they're renting or they own it. If you're in an office, somebody built that, right? We need... 100%. That's what I keep trying to tell people. It's like, There's people that have to build things in order for you to go shopping, to go buy your groceries, to go buy your clothes, to go buy, I mean, yes, there's Amazon, but guess what? Amazon has buildings that house the things, so that has to be built. So regardless, there's buildings that people have to build, whether it's a home or a building for people to go to, restaurants, you know, it's the whole gamut of things. So airports, runways, highways, bridges, I mean, it's. Yeah. Construction makes the world go around. No question about that. Well, kudos to you for the great work you're doing. And we'll certainly uh, put our stamp of approval on your efforts and and be supportive and, and try and be helpful in helping you plant that flag where it can at least be seen by more and, and hopefully awareness can be more readily available to, to people that maybe hadn't recognized this in the past from this conversation. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, so uh, I guess just as a takeaway for the listeners, what's the one thing that you hope people will have as a as an action item or a takeaway from our conversation today? My action item is for people in general to speak up. If you see something, say something. That's how the change is going to happen. It happens every day in front of all of us. There's some sort of scenario that we've all seen at least once a week, where we've seen something or heard something that needs to be changed. And that's how the change is going to happen. Um, Be kind. Um, I feel like the world has just gotten really, really ugly. And unfortunately, COVID, I feel, has magnified that. Give people grace. We've all gone through trauma over the last couple years. Nobody kind of knows where it's going or, you know, what the end result is, if you will. Um, Some of us live in states like myself where we have severe (laughs) mandates. Um, So just be kind, you know, give people the grace that we don't know what they're going through and 
just allow them to speak. I love that. So just a couple more personal questions to wrap up if you're okay. Um, all right. So what is one thing that you're grateful for in your professional life that you really appreciate? You know, I can honestly say that I have been supported my entire career by the companies that I've worked for. I've typically been the only female and I have been supported um, by the males that I have worked for, um, by me asking questions of the field craft to better myself or in the office learning how to do things, whether it's putting a job together or an estimate or you know, my role now as vice president, that's a whole new role for me. And it's a whole new responsibility. But being able to be supported um, and respected, um, I've worked pretty hard to earn earn the respect by treating people as a human being first versus an employee um, or a coworker, um, because we all have life that happens, right? So that's what I feel is probably my greatest um I guess, accomplishment or, um, I don't know, I don't know how to say it, uh, you know, that I've been supported. I haven't been blackballed because I'm a female. Um, and I'm blessed for that because I know that there's a lot of women that get treated much differently than I have in my career. Well, you're a great example of, uh, you know, leadership by example, uh, I can tell um, just in the short time we've been able to get to know one another and to, to talk. Um, so I, I appreciate um, our friendship and look forward to continuing that forward and maybe having you on again down the road. <laughs> All right. One last thing. So what is Amber's superpower? Do you, you have, when you put your cape on, what are you getting ready to do? I've always been kind of the go-to person for, I, I'm good at multitasking as far as not just doing a multiple things, but I can hear multiple conversations going on at a time. So I, I, I feel like my superpower is, is that I know information without having to be directly involved in the conversation. Cause I'm just kind of aware of what's going on. So being able to have the answer nine times out of 10, when people come to me with a question, um, not everybody can do that. So um, I think that's a superpower, um, you know, being able to listen and hear what someone's going through or um, experiencing. That's fantastic. Well, I can see why you're successful and I, I expect it's only going to get better as you continue forward and Thank wish you. you the best of luck. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us again. And, and again, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to connect up again down the road. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today on the Mobile Workforce Podcast, sponsored by About Time Technologies and WorkMax. If you liked the conversation we had today or were able to learn anything new or helpful, please make sure to follow us on our WorkMax page on LinkedIn and on Instagram at WorkMax underscore. And subscribe to the show on iTunes or your preferred podcast platform so you will never miss another insightful episode. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating and review and share the show with your friends and colleagues. Your support means the world to us and will allow us to continue providing impactful information with others looking to improve their results in their business and in turn, their life.